welcome back to another episode. You guys are going to be watching us sail to Wyag, right your part, but right now it's pizza night. Kamikoto makes incredible knives. These knives are Japanese steel kitchen knives using traditional techniques from Japan. Cutting in the galley has never been so easy. Kamikoto builds on the legacy of over 800 years of Japanese technology and expertise in creating the steel to make knives that have been meticulously handcrafted from using traditional techniques. Komikoto also only uses steel sourced from mills in Japan. Each knife comes in a beautiful wood box which keeps the knives both safe and makes them a perfect gift. Each knife goes through a rigorous 19 step process that takes several years from start to finish. Komikoto is so confident about their knives that each knife comes with a lifetime guarantee. The other thing about these knives is they are used by Michelin star chefs all over the world. If you two want to get your hands on a set of these knives, which <laughs> are so sharp and have made such a difference in my life in the galley, Komikoto is offering our viewers $50 off knives so all you got to do is go down to the link that is in the description down below and use the code katalpa 50 and that, they'll give you $50 off your next order. I'm going to do that again because that was super fun. <laughs> I've never had knives this show. Oh my goodness. Kamikato. Pretty awesome knives. <laughs> Alright, we're going to finish making these pizzas now and you're going to continue sailing to Wyag. Join us as we sail from Helmahera to Wyag. We are on our right. Four knots. Been on watch since four o'clock this morning. The sun is just starting to come up. Subscribe to join us and our travels as we share our life on the sea. So we just pulled anchor, we're leaving Halmahera and we've got about a 20 hour passage ahead of us. Maybe 24 hours, 20 to 24 hours. There's an island from here between here and where we're heading to stop. So we're gonna see if we can get some fish there. Otherwise we'll keep going to Wayag, which is about 160 nautical miles. So that will be uh, longer. We've got an open up passage. So what I've got on the board behind us is a little bit of our um, watch roster that we do um, it's rough it gives a rough outline of, of our watch times but it changes obviously if there's something going on and he needs to be on the helm he'll be up there to help but otherwise we do three hours roughly around each and then we'll see how it works out two watches each and lee will obviously just He's got the, the least amount on the board because he will just be floating around and when we need him, we need him and he'll be resting as much as he needs to rest so that if anything does go down, he can be on the helm. Um, yeah, that's it. We're off. Heading off for 20 hours at the sea. much wind it's pretty much on the nose just under 30 degrees about 20 degrees so it's not great sailing weather but we are motoring along and um, maybe the wind will pick up maybe the wind will swim around swing around um, I'm probably gonna make lunch Lee's having a rest a bit of a sleep he's been up since five getting fuel this morning and 
and um, that is it. It's a beautiful day. It's very calm. And we've got a full moon tonight, so that's very exciting. I love when we're sailing and it's a full moon. It's beautiful. Sunday roast. You wouldn't believe it, it is Sunday too. It is then, is it? No, it's Saturday, isn't it? I don't know. It's getting close, guys. It's the weekend roast anyway. Our leaf is a little bit spoiled. We've uh, pulled out a roast for our sailing tonight. Easy dinner, whacked it in the oven. Yeah. Should be a nice night. We just had 15 knots on the nose and we're about to abort for the night, but backed off and we've probably got about 10 miles till we can actually put it to the beam so just motoring on to the wind at the moment and uh, hopefully the wind doesn't follow us around as we turn. Because <laughs> it's been doing that. Anyway we're gonna get into dinner. these guys have got for dinner but I know what I got. It's just after six o'clock, sun's gone down, moon is coming up. We've got 99% moon tonight. Love having the moon for a night sail. It's just you can see what's going on, you can see vessels, fads, everything's just so much easier. Um, so I've just dimmed down all the um, display units. Most units have three or four settings and you turn them down so the light doesn't take your vision away from outside of what's going on. Bella's going to keep her eye on the radar, the chart plotter, the wind instrument. We've got the wind at 30, 20 degrees at the moment so we've only got the main up. Hopefully we get around the top of Hill Mahera and um, we can get the head sail out, turn the engine off and start sailing. So until then, Bella's going to take her watch of three hours, followed by Sarah for the next three. And um, I'm going to go and have a little snooze. Captain's tired. It's bedtime. He's had a big roast dinner. And um, time for a little nap, just in case the weather gets nasty. We uh, checked the weather before we left. It was wrong. Uh, we checked it. Um, on the way and it was wrong I uh, just come past the little town to see if we get an update but um, it is Indonesia it's so variable and it's very hard to predict unless it's a I don't know a really constant breeze but at the moment it's the changing of seasons the winds are a little bit more light and variable and um, it's got to work with it the best you can I'll fire up the Iridium later on and get a uh, predict win update. 
take it from there guys, there's nothing forecasted to be bad, but storms in this area can just come out of nowhere, so the sails are reefed right down, and uh, always prepared for the worst in Indonesia for night sailing. Definitely a keen eye out for uh, any other vessels, torches, bats, ships, unmarked ships, ships without AIS. I could go on for the next hour guys, but I'm tired, I'm going to bed. about 10 o'clock and we've just turned the engine off. We've um, turned around the top of the headland and we're on route now for Wyag, so on the right angle. And we got wind on the beam, it's about 80 degrees. And we're going for four and a half, five knots. So it's pretty nice. We now turned off the engine. Um, the moon's out, it's a pretty nice night. There's something, uh, of a storm brewing to the left of us, but hopefully it stays away. Other than that, it's been a very pleasurable watch. Well, I'm gonna go to bed. Lee is taking over watch. It's a very, very calm. Winds dropped down a little bit. We're going about three knots. But it's very peaceful. Anyway, I'm going to bed. Night, Captain. Night. So it's 5.30 and I've been on watch since 4 o'clock this morning. The sun is just starting to come up and I've been listening to an audiobook and that's really just about it. We're still ages off our destination, not Wyag, but the Anchorage before. That's 80 miles away and we're doing three knots. So, still 25 hours to go. Still motor sailing. We've got wind on the beam. That's only about six, seven knots. And we're going along about four knots, which is better than what we were doing. We we're doing about three, three and a half. We are about 20 hours away from Wyag. We were gonna stop at an island in between, but we've decided that we're gonna keep going because that island's a little bit lower and yeah, there's not, there's not wind to get to it and there's might as well do less miles to get to Wag than trying to stop. So we're going to keep going. Um, probably be there. We may be at a little sand island above Wag tonight, late tonight. But depends how we go. Hopefully we can pick up a little bit of speed. We might get there a little bit earlier. We had a pretty good watch. He motor sailed most of the night. I think he was, he was on watch from like 11.30 to about 4. And Bella was on watch from 4 to 7. And I've been on watch since 7. It's about... 8, 8.30. We have a squall in front of us. I've been waiting to unreef the mainsail because I thought that squall might come in, but it seems to be just moving with us. Anyway, hopefully it'll give us some wind at some point. We've still got a little while to go. Here's to another day on the big blue. coming past some volcanic activity. So apparently I think there's a, that's 
it appears volcano. So I think there's an underwater volcano not very far from us right now. So it says to keep clear 35 miles, which I don't think we are. Anyway, we're just coming past. Cruising on past. Please don't erupt while we're going past. But there is reef coming up that we're gonna stop and have a look at see if you can maybe spear a fish on it or just have a jump in and have a look see if it's any good and then that's where we're getting to way right there we're about 12 hours off so we're going to arrive at 2 a.m. oh jolly good <laughs> Oh, lucky we've been in there before and hopefully the Simrad has saved our path and we'll be right. We've got a track. Hopefully. But we're about, what, a couple hours off this reef? About an hour. About an hour. I think Terra, Terra just radioed. We're going to play a game over the radio, so that will be fun. Right though, my turn to go off watch and uh, go and have a lie down, I think. Oh, wait, you're either going to make lunch or stay and watch an extra 10 minutes. Oh, I'll stay and watch 10 minutes. Ah! <laughs> How is this? There's a fish! There's a fish! Are you kidding? Look at how many fish there are! out the front we've just seen two whales we think I don't know what it was but there's like a big bubbling kind of thing went under the boat with it went off as a big bait ball and we are on volcanic area it could have been like a bubbling volcano we're not really sure but look pretty cool there's so many birds, there's so many fish here, it's insane. The rod has not gone off. Lee did just get a little rainbow running not long ago, but we're waiting for the rod to go off because there was that many fish. It's incredible. Still fish around, but we, we did come over that um, shallow, well, it said it was a shallow reef, but we didn't see anything shallower than 50 meters, so we didn't stop. It's really, really crazy what you see out here on the ocean, guys. It's beautiful. It's magical. It's been a really lovely day, so we're still going about four knots for motoring. Sails are up, but there's not much wind. And uh, I think we're going to be arriving in Wayag at about 2 a.m. The lovely, convenient hour of 2 a.m. <laughs> anyway. We know where to go, so we're good. The fish are still jumping, the birds are going nuts. It's crazy out here, people. It's crazy. All right, guys, we just dropped the anchor. It's about um, 12.30, and we decided to come into um, an anchorage, which is about 12 nautical miles away from where we're going, have a sleep, and then head there tomorrow. So we've stopped, and it is a very beautiful little place. I think it's like in three meters of water and it's crystal clear and there's a little sand island and we've been here before briefly but um, I'm kind of I'm really excited to wake up in the morning. Had some crazy currents coming in, we motored, we had a little bit of wind but motor sailed. Anyway, 
got in here safely and we've dropped the anchor and we can now uh, go to bed. She'll be lovely. Guys, that's innovation at its best. <laughs> we were on a proper shower after five years. <laughs> I was a little bit bored on passage. Thought I'd make up a little PVC one. What's that bit Thank you so much for watching that episode. Hope you guys enjoyed. Till next time, guys. See you later. Bye. Don't forget to put a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss any more videos.